Hi guys, I'm back. I wanted to share something very quickly that had to go with the lace. Another thing you can do is lay out some doilies wherever you think you need them. Just some old doilies. It's not even no big deal. Some that you know you're not going to use regularly. Okay, using, um, you can use the coffee technique, but Again, the only time I like to use the coffee is when I'm trying to make it look vintage. But spraying from a distance, I come back in. Oh, I do use my paper towel again to get up the excess. And again, I do this because I don't like waiting. I'm very impatient. Which is so funny because my daughter, my youngest, says, when we were young, you didn't have patience like you do with the grandkids. Well, of course I didn't. It wasn't my job to have patience. Then I lift them. I should have sprayed a little bit more. Maybe I still can if I put it carefully. Let me just spray a little bit more. I'm going to focus more on where the doily was laying than anywhere else. And that's probably not lined up right, but that's okay. So you can do this using the coffee. I'm going to try a little glimmer mist. Oh, I should have done the pink first. If you did too much of it, Lay your paper towel on top and really careful not to lift your doilies. Where's that pink? Let's see what this pink does. Oh my, it's really making it grungy. I'm really focusing more on the inside of the, the doily. and putting more pressure on the around the doily. Now, of course, you're not going to use bright colors like this. Well, you could, but this is just how I do it. And I like how it comes through on the other side as well. So you have a positive and a negative. I did this video several times. Finally, I just said, okay, I gotta break it up in in parts because So there's another thing you can do with your doilies. And I love that shimmer. Oh my gosh. So I just thought I'd share that with you. I forgot about that. Okay, the other thing. Um, is now this I found that I know there's ladies that actually take this outside and they dye it 
or they, they spray or put the coffee and let it dry in the sun. I don't like doing it that way. It takes me too long. But these are the plastic doilies. Uh, I kept collecting these for years. And why I collected so much is beyond me. Because, let me tell you, I got a pile. I'm going to get rid of a bunch and just junk them. I don't need so many. But Oh, very quickly. Okay. See these ones that you can find, these plastic ones like this, that you can cut apart? This is a cute idea inside of your junk journal. So you get another little tutorial. See these ones that you can cut off a couple of the squares. I cut off two squares. I'm just going to move that and then I will show you this one. What I did, if you get the one with the two squares and you put paper on the inside and then just staple it down the middle where it connects. Do not separate them. Do two of them connected just like this. These are really cute to make a little book to put in your junk journal. Look how cute that is. Now I didn't make this one. This is where I got the idea and I don't know who made it. I found it at the Crazy Goodwill. But I thought I would share that because I do have some of the square ones. And how cute is that? So that's an idea you guys can do. Okay, now, these ones that are plastic. Um, one of these, remember the, the old vintage radio cabinet? This fits great inside of that where the speaker used to go. So hubby's going to nail some of this in the middle so that I'll still have some lace in there. But you can use different ones of these. Um, I just collect different ones whenever I see them. But again, I have some that are multiples and I don't need them. But look at the patterns on them. So this is how I do mine. Again, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's just mine. Um, now for these, I really don't like uh, using the coffee technique on it the spray coffee because it they're plastic and the coffee being water mixed with coffee tends to run and then it's a hot mess so this is what how I like to do it so let me share with that with you now I want to share this too this was coffee dyed and then what I did was I came in I sprayed some water on it or some of the coffee mixture and then I sprinkled some of my little coffee salt and then I carefully rubbed it off so that if I want to write on here I can and it still gives it a vintage look without all of it because I don't like my papers dyed really dark so it but it gives it a vintage look so I thought I'd share that okay so now we need some paper now this is where I like to use the Glimmer Mist or my uh, own paper. Now again, I'm using a darker color, but you just lay it wherever you want it. Now when these are wrinkled, what I do is I put a, a dishcloth on the bottom, I put this on top, and I put a piece of wax paper on top of that. And then I iron it so that it, it, it comes out straighter. So with this, I'm going to spray a little bit of the brown, and again, you need something that sprays a mist, not a stream. And so from a distance, and I tend to spray right up on top like this. Not like this, because you'll go under the plastic. And then very quickly, I come in and I dry some. Now you do not want to use your heat gun on the plastic very hard because you'll melt your plastic. And so I'm going to lift that very quickly and voila. We got us an image. And at the same time your coffee dyed paper still give you 
the um, vintage feel to your paper. And you still get the image of the, the plastic doily or tablecloth, whatever you want to call it. So there is another way that I do it. Now I'm going to use this other plastic one. And I'm going to get a piece of... This is a file folder. It's all ring. It's not straight. So what I do is I wet my paper on both sides with just water. And this was avocado. And then I find a clean part and wet the paper a little. You can Now I was going to do tags with this, so it and then iron them. But what I do is after wetting the paper, I come in with this and I tend to dry it so that it flattens a little bit more and my paper around the edge is really, really wet. I tend to flatten it. And it's not flat because it's really thick. It was a really, really, really thick file folder. So, once you've got your... And it's important to try and get it as flat as possible. And that's why you need to wet the paper first. Again, you can iron it. I did iron a bunch of paper, or yeah, that I had tea dyed, coffee dyed for my gingerbread journal, and it took forever. So once you got your paper pretty flat, I'm going to lay another one of these plastic cloths. And again, this is just where I like to use my Glimmer Mist. Now I'm going to use brown this time. And again, you want to spray this way, but from up high. So that the ink does not run under your design. Don't spray it this way because it will spray right under it. And again, do not use your heat gun where um, right close to the plastic and move it vigorously so that you do not melt your tablecloth. And you guys, I might de-stash some of them tablecloths because I do have, as you saw, that bag is full of them. So if anybody's interested in buying some, leave a comment down below. You guys, look how pretty that is. This is just a quicker way of getting it done for me because I'm impatient. I can't wait. My husband tells me all the time, you need patience. Now, when it comes to my children and my grandkids, I have patience. But when I'm doing a project, I want it done right away. He gets so mad when I spray paint something or, or I paint some things because it'll start to run. And he's like, you're... You're trying to cover it all in one coat. He said you got to do it gently and in several coats. And well, that's not my strong point. I'm just flattening it. So it's just a quicker way of getting your pattern on your paper. Now, if you want again the vintage feel to it. I just spray it with the water vigorously. Where's my coffee salt? I get my coffee salt. And if you want, say, a, a really dark area, the other thing you can do to break up the, the granules is spray them again. Get your table, your napkin, and I should use a different napkin because this one's got color. Just dab off the excess color or water. Dry it real quick.
again, I'm sorry there's three parts to this. If you don't want to see how I do it, you just keep going. It's okay. I just thought I'd share how I do my masking. So you can still, now it's not completely dry, but I tend to manipulate the paper a little bit more while it's wet so that when it starts drying, it will flatten more. But you can get a vintage fill to it using the coffee salt. It's okay, you don't have to call it coffee salt, coffee granules. Now, here's the other thing. Now, you, like I said, in my book, and I'll show it here in a minute, um, I didn't, when I went to write, I noticed that the coffee granules that stayed on top wouldn't let my pen write on them. So this is all I did, was I came back in and I scraped them off. But it gave me the effect of it being vintage. So now, when I write across this, it won't hiccup in when I'm writing. But you guys, look how pretty that is. So that's just another technique that you can do. Now I'm going to stop here and come back with the last one and change this paper. See you in a minute.